how Isaiah 53 ends in verse 12. Um, because he poured out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Transgressors. He bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. That is us. God is interceding in our lives. God has given us favor. And no matter what you're going through right now, when you feel barren or hopeless, unproductive, and not going anywhere, God still got you. And you got to call the devil a liar when he tells you you don't have a future. That's the power of the song we just had. Now let's break it down. The theology is so deep, I could preach an hour, but I want to try to be on time. I know singers are coming in practice. I'm so thankful for that. Verse 1, Isaiah 54. Single barren. When your life is barren. Here he's talking about um, recouping from losing control of Jerusalem. The Israelites recouping and building and building and, and becoming who they are today. Israel. You're a child of covenant. He's talking about us. We're a child of covenant and Jesus Christ. It can be taken as, as, as a woman who's unable to conceive. Shelly and I were there many years, told we couldn't have children. We adopted. We were happy as pie. Thy will be done. When I was 44 and she got pregnant, I was like, oh, boy, that was almost as hard as the first news. Not really, it wasn't. It was like, wow, God is amazing. But we never gave up hope. Can anybody say amen? If we don't get our way, it doesn't mean God's not working. You who have not born. Now he's talking about his people, his covenant to his people. God has a plan for the Jewish people. We're part of that in Jesus Christ. Break forth into singing and cry out loud. Celebrate. Praise God. Christ died for his church. And now we're speaking about his church, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. And then he says, enlarge the place of your tent. You know what happens sometimes when a family gets pregnant, another child's coming, they build on another room. They buy a bigger house. And God's saying, You've been praying, and I've been hearing you. You feel unproductive and barren, but God's about to do something mighty in your midst. You need to get ready for your heart's desire. God hasn't forgotten you. You may not have a child as you wish, but we found out one of our best joys in our life is not getting the child by birth, but getting one by adoption. Anybody say amen? You don't know what God has in store for you when things didn't go as you wish, but God's not done with you. Amen? Sometimes desolate is just how we feel and barren. We feel like what I hoped my life would be, it's not there. But that doesn't mean God's done with you. He's just beginning. And look what he says. Enlarge the place of your tents. And let this, them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen the cords. Strengthen your stakes. Get ready for God to move. Start living like you're expecting something wonderful in Jesus Christ. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. God's going to expand you. Your faith, most importantly of all. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. So all of a sudden, very focused on the Old Testament Jewish people through this earth, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and beyond, salvation will come to the whole earth. Now, verse 4 through 8, and we're going to see the New Testament promise here. Do not fear. You've got to start owning your faith. Stop fearing. But I got problems. I didn't ask you if you had problems. My statement was stop fearing. Well, why would you say that? Well, because God does. For you will not be ashamed. Sometimes we're ashamed of how our life is going. Can anybody say amen? Or am I the only one that's been there? Frankie, you ever been there? 
He says, don't be ashamed. It's not over yet. Wait and see what God's going to do. Fear not. Don't be ashamed. God's got a good plan for you. Neither be disgraced. For you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth. The sins of your youth, the reproach, going around circles in the desert. Things that happen to you. God's going to give you favor. It's going to work out. And you'll forget all that because you're walking in his glory. And one day we're going to walk in his glory in heaven and it won't make a difference. And the reason is this. The reproach of your widowhood being barren. He's not going to remember it. For your maker is your husband. What gives a wife strength, especially in Old Testament today and hopefully in today, is when your husband is strong and uplifting and providing and protecting and taking care of you. When the Bible says to the church, the bride of Christ, your maker, the Lord Jesus Christ, is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. So now we have a Redeemer. We have a Lord. This is his church. He made us. We're his children. He created us. And he says, you're not going to be ashamed. You'll forget all that one day. He is called the God of the whole earth. And he is sovereign. He is powerful. He's in control. And we forget that when we have troubles. I'm sorry for talking so loud, baby. For the Lord has called you. And the first thing, you're called as a child of God. Amen. If he didn't call you, you would be destined for destruction. Like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Was anybody have a life that was forsaken and grieved in their spirit before Christ? Really, that's what it took for me to start seeking God. Like a youthful wife when you were refused. The things we have done and and I've done in my life before Christ, I thought Christ, God would refuse me. But he loved us yet while we were sinners. Says your God, for a mere moment, I have forsaken you. You might be going something through right now. You feel forsaken. And as Christians, we can't say we won't feel like that at times. But it's just for a moment. Us. Press on. You're stronger than this. Press on. Get ready. Expand your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Press on. you got more inside of you in Jesus Christ than you ever know. Press on. Strengthen, lengthen. God's going to expand your faith. Sit back and watch him at work. Just a moment. You feel forsaken, but you are not forsaken. Thank you. But with great mercies, I will gather you. God's not done. I will gather you. He says, I will draw you in. You see, if you're a child of covenant and you've got problems, God will use problems to draw you closer than you've ever been. And you'll look back and say, that problem was my greatest treasure because that's when I was the closest, when I was broken, as Pastor Frankie spoke of. With a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment, just a moment. But the Lord of hosts is drawing you in with irresistible power and absolute sovereignty over your life, with everlasting kindness. I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Now the church is involved in that promise. The Lord, teach us. Teach us to fear not. And sing. Verse 9. 
For this is like the waters of Noah to me, capital me. God brought the waters. God took away the waters. God was in control. For I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth. After the waters of Noah came the covenant of the rainbow. We have a greater covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're under a covenant. You're a child of God. So I've sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. We're under a covenant with God. He'll chastise us, but he won't discharge us. The first thing people tell me all the time in counseling when they're really going through a hard time, well, God's mad at me. God doesn't love me. And I say, he doesn't love you no more. Because he can't, because he loves you with all the blood of his son. He can't love you anymore because he loves you in totality. He loves you as a child. You're his child. And then they finally get where I'm going and they see the awkwardness and the beauty of it. He loves you with everything. There's so many times I've sat with those that are really depressed, thinking bad thoughts and suicidal. And that's the first thing they say. God doesn't love me. And the devil's a liar. And he's speaking to their heart. And God loves him. He's not angry. For the mountains shall depart and the hills will be moved. But under grace, you will not be removed. God's got you. My kindness, there's the grace, shall not depart from you. No matter what you're going through right now, you're a child of grace. And God's kindness is there. He just is pulling you closer. This is just a moment. That moment will come and it's going to go. And you're going to forget all this because you're going to walk in blessing. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. Whatever you're going through doesn't change the fact that your Redeemer redeemed you and you have peace with God. I believe 75% of the people, I'm going to the parable of sower of seeds, 75% of the people on this earth do not have peace with God. Just a simple statistical evaluation of a parable. I bet it's close. And they have no peace with God. They may think at times in their life because things are going their way, God must give them favor and they're at peace. But it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. And sometimes the sun hits both too. But no matter if it rains or not or the mountains are removed by a storm, you have peace with God. And nothing will change it. Says the Lord, here's the most important, who has mercy on you. Under God's covenant, we have mercy. Well, I messed up. I made mistakes. Well, who hasn't? I made a big one. So it needs a big turnaround, that's all. <laughs> if you're going the wrong direction, I love the sign that says God allows U-turns. If you have actions that are not putting you at peace with God, change your actions. He has a covenant of peace. Have chastisement for the actions. But God has mercy on you. Anybody say amen? Sometimes we forget we got an infusion of grace. And I had COVID earlier in the year. It gave me infusion. And it really made me feel much stronger the next day or two. And then I went backwards a little bit. You got an infusion of grace. That's God's favor, His love, His care, His kindness. 
run through your veins. Visualize it. You're in a position that your current circumstances aren't going to change. Oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempest and not comfortable. And now we just got real. Yes, sometimes bad things happen to Christian people trying their best. Anybody say amen? Sometimes it's because mistakes you made. Sometimes it's because things that you did not do. Bad things happen to good people. And if you're putting your faith in a relationship on God or whether or not bad things might happen to you, you're going to be very disappointed in this life. Anybody say amen? He says, look at this. Oh, you afflicted one. First of all, God knows you had a affliction. He knows you're being tossed. He knows there's a tempest and a storm in your life. He knows you feel like you're not comfortable and you're alone. But then he says, behold, or look at this. God, now, right promise. God is a promise keeper. When you're feeling tossed and turned in the tempest, afflicted and without comfort, God says, behold, I want you to see your foundation. The promise is you stand on the solid rock and it is more beautiful than you can imagine. I will lay stones with colorful gems. I will lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal and your walls of precious stones. Oh, how I need those walls of protection all around me. You should see me out there the other day running my chainsaw and then instead of cutting down a tree, holding on to the tree so I don't fall down. Anybody say amen? You ever been there? Put walls all around me. We need that, Lord. Sometimes we need protection from the world. Sometimes we need protection from ourselves. Precious stones. All your children will be taught by the Lord. Are you worried about your children? You keep leading by example. They're going to be taught by the Lord. What do you think means the most to me in my life? Yes, I love teaching other people. But if I teach everybody else and don't teach my children, I am a failure. Anybody say amen? Your children will be taught by the Lord. Keep walking in that foundation. And great shall be the peace of your children. That's what I want. We're going to leave a legacy. You're a child of God. You have an infusion of grace. And it's going to make a difference in your children's life. Don't you give up. In righteousness you shall be established. In righteousness. So we don't have that righteousness in us, but we do in him, Jesus Christ. In his righteousness you're established. You shall not be far, you shall be far, excuse me, from oppression. For you shall not fear each and every one a promise, your children. You shall not fear. God knows who you're going to be. You're just not there yet. Anybody say amen? God's saying stretch out your cords. That means he's not done with you. Maybe at the end of this storm, you're going to be stronger than you could ever imagine. And from terror shall not come near you. I'm so glad one day when I'm looking up at the daisies, my body is anyway. I'm looking down at the same time from heaven. And I will have no terror of the devil's hell. Anybody say amen? I don't have to have terror of death, destruction, or fire, or brimstone. I'm a child of grace because I have his righteousness to depend on and not mine. And I have a powerful foundation in Jesus Christ that I stand. I'm not on sinking sand. He laid it, and it's going to go down to the next generation. He promised it. i got to do my part, though. Indeed, switch your gears. 
they, does anybody have a they in their life? Somebody who is just difficult? They shall surely symbol, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Trust God. Trust God. There's a verse that every pastor should, in their heart, trust God with. Do not touch my anointed ones. Are you a child of God? Are you anointed? God says, don't touch my child. We can trust God. For your sake. Did you catch that? For your sake, they will not prevail. God cares about your sake. Two more verses, 16. Behold, so again, look at this and rethink your position. I know you feel afflicted, tossed with the tempest, and not comforted. The first behold was the promises, but now look at the blacksmith. Behold, I have created the blacksmith. Now we know the blacksmith works by fire, but I want you to think greater. The blacksmith creates weapons of war. And the devil may have his weapons of war, but God has created a heavenly blacksmith that has weapons of warfare beyond what we can imagine. And Jesus is going to come back and with the word of his mouth destroy all evil. God says, so you have a weapons of war on earth? They don't compare. I have created the blacksmith. We say the tribulation is going to be so awful, and it will be. But then they're going to see the powerful abilities of God to destroy every man-made machine and bomb and thing of sin. There's no greater blacksmith than that of God to make whatever it needs to bring victory forever. I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals and the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. Oh, Jesus is coming with the mouth, the sword is going to slay all evil. They symbol against you, nation. Israel, they will not prevail. They surround you. They will not prevail. God's people, you're a covenant. They will not prevail. The devil will not prevail. He will not steal your eternity. He can't. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Guarantee of a promise. And yes, I believe my soul is sealed. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Yeah, the devil's going to form some weapons. And there might be some evil people on earth who will do the same. But God's got a blacksmith. And he is powerful. That he created. I have created the spoiler to destroy. Your evil plans will be destroyed. No weapon formed against you so prosper. That's only because we're a child of grace, redeemed by the blood of Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, Jesus Christ. Never forget your position in Christ. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, he shall condemn. So people are talking about you. They talk about me. They talk about everyone. Makes them feel better. God will take care of it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. For all of a sudden, he says, you have a heritage, a solid foundation. You're being tossed, but just for a mere moment. And their righteousness is from me. Now we go right back to where we started. Jesus Christ made promises to his church. He is the husband 
O bride, you might feel barren. You might not be coming what you wanted to be, but it's not over yet because you have redemption and you have a redeemer. And because of that, the blood of Christ, you have the righteousness of Christ in you. You're established. Stand strong. Us. Says, I learned Japanese. When you go home, tell your spouse, I learned some Japanese tonight. Us. And they say, what does it mean? You got to go to church or watch it on YouTube. Sorry. But sometimes you got to have some grit in your soul as a Christian. Because if you don't have that grit to dig deep, you'll never reach your potential and you'll never expand your tent. And that's a tent of faith. And you'll never lengthen your cords. you got to have some grit. Says the Lord. Isaiah 54 is a chapter of promises to the believer that realized Isaiah 53 is found in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this lesson. I thank you for the depth of the lesson. I thank you, God, that you can encourage us when we feel like that moment is upon us where we're tossed and turned and the tempest is here and we don't feel comfort. But teach us to realize our position and our posture of faith and our righteousness in you. And I ask this all Christ in your powerful name. Amen.